Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Good morning, American. It's Friday. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, baby. <laughs> it is Friday. It's also uh, the final day before my vacation. Uh, Wait, what? Yeah. Uh, taking off for a little over a week here. Next week I'll be gone, and then I think I'm back the following Tuesday, a week from Tuesday. So, uh, Jeffy will be here. What will we with Keith? do? I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. What will we do? I don't know. <laughs> Saw that. Uh, oh, by the way, we've got uh, Louis Elizondo coming up in an hour about UFOs inside the Pentagon's hunt for UFOs. Imminent yeah. is his uh, book, and They're if you've ever here. seen, if you've ever seen. A documentary on UFOs. You've seen Lou Elizondo. Absolutely. He's in all of them. <laughs> he's the man. Yeah. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah. He's the guy to turn to for UFO information. So he believes they're already here. Aliens are here. And uh, we'll talk to him about that in an hour, second hour. Uh, meantime, we, of course, have uh, the Kamala Tampon Tim interview last night, which was agonizing <laughs> oh man it was absolutely agonizing She'll from just, beginning to end yeah every minute of it every answer agonizing <laughs> and this and the way cnn presented it i mean it was only about 20 <laughs> minutes long i think 20 or 25 or something like that tops mm-hmm. and uh well the whole thing was 16 minutes and the, there you go. Of interview. And, and the way they presented it, you know, with the love stories wrapped around the interview yeah. on CNN was just, yeah. uh, it was almost too much to handle. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost too much to handle. Yes. But I handled it. The only saving grace is football's back. I know. I had Missouri on the other channel. Makes so life good. worth living because uh, football is back. No See that uh, Missouri eked out a win. Over Murray State. 51 to nothing, baby. Wow. Whew. Shut him down. It's a close one. It was. 28 nothing after the first quarter. You I know, was like, okay, we're good. When Missouri and Murray <laughs> State get together on the football field, you can throw out all the record books. You uh, really can. Yeah, you, you have to so, wait until Saturday night. Tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Six o'clock. Get to w- it. Six o'clock mountain time. Uh, so, yeah, BYU, Southern Illinois. Another another yes another barn burner where you could throw out all the record books. I will say this though, uh, Southern Illinois. I think they were the runner up for the national championship last year in the okay. FCS category. Okay, and they're ranked eleventh okay. this year to start yeah. the FCS. They're ranked eleventh in that. Yeah, this year. Mm-hmm. And you're you're hanging your hat on that? No, I'm t- I'm fine with it. We should crush them, but I don't know. We'll see. I I've told you before. I'm probably the most optimistic Cougar fan. On There's the no doubt about that. There's and, no doubt about that. And everybody, I mean, everybody's thinking they're going to struggle all year. Uh, in fact, the sports writers predicted four wins for them this year. What? Four. No way. They yeah. win more than that. <laughs> Me, I, gotta, yes. I looked. I remember looking at their schedule a while ago. Think, and there was, you know, there are a couple teams. It's like, like the fifteenth. They play Baylor. They, in they the always, country. They always, they always, mm-hmm. Baylor always plays you guys tough. But those are that's a game they should win. We won the last one with Baylor. I understand, but I'm just saying mm-hmm. that's a that's a game that you know. Yeah. Try, that's just a game that sticks in my head as the mm-hmm. you know they always they seem to struggle with Baylor. But yeah, I, they win more than four. Holy cow! If they don't win more than if they if they Miss a bowl game? Oh my! Again, with six victories for the second year in Holy a row. Holy cow! Yeah, it'd be bad. It'd be devastating. Uh, all right, so we've got the interview last night. They she finally did a sit down in friendly territory, of course, on CNN with Dana Bash. Friendly territory. She, That's yeah, I loving love fest. loving territory, and she had the coach with her, so she had that backstop as well. And there really wasn't a backstop. No, I mean he. Yeah, he just sat there. <laughs> shook his head and he had to lie a couple times uh, you know and Dana, oh, Dana was like oh I forgot you were here okay I gotta ask you a question yeah uh, how about this and uh, that it was it was nothing I mean he, there was it really he shouldn't have been there no he, he shouldn't, shouldn't have. have been there shouldn't have it's her first interview yeah do it solo yeah and she can't she can't she's a buffoon and she's exposed to be a, as a buffoon every single time she speaks so <laughs> I think she wanted that little buffer there of a little security blanket in the commie coach. The buffoon blanket. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
But pretty interesting. Uh, Dana Bash actually kind of did ask at least one of the questions that the Trump campaign said she should ask. ask. Uh, she, she asked why Kamala hasn't taken the actions that she's talking about taking as vice president. Why have you done not- why have you not done anything yet? Cut one. President for three and a half years. Yeah. The steps that you're talking about now, why haven't you done them already? Thank you. Well, yeah. first of all, we had to recover oh, as an economy, God. and we have done that. I'm very proud of the mm. work that we have done that has brought inflation down to less than 3%. Pause it. Okay, inflation was 1.6%. <laughs> they brought it down, though. No, <laughs> they did not bring it down. Well, maybe they, it is they brought still it down up. from their high. They brought it down from their high. Yes, yeah. that's what they did. Uh, but a year after they took office, okay? They didn't inherit this from Trump. A year after they took office, it was 9%. 9%. They inherited 1.6% inflation. No, you didn't have to fix anything when you got into office. Uh, nothing. Yes, we were recovering from the pandemic, but that's it. I mean, we had a a great economy despite the pandemic under Trump. And then you and Joe screwed it up. All right, let her finish here. There's any more. I don't think there's any more. Agonizing. That's fine. We can move on. Wow. And, you know, Kamala, 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 Chameleon has flipped on virtually every policy, but she's never changed uh, her mind on well, she's her values are exactly the same. The, Do you my know that? values are still her the same. Values are that, the same. That was the line she went to multiple times. <laughs> no, that, what? So your values are the same, but your policies are all the opposite. <laughs> hmm, that's strange. That is. She also said she's never changed her mind on fracking. E policy issues. Uh, energy is a big one. Mm -hmm. When you were in Congress, you supported the Green New Deal. And in 2019, you said, quote, there is no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Fracking, as you know, is a pretty big issue, particularly in your must-win state of Pennsylvania. Do you still want to ban fracking? No, and I made that clear on the debate stage in 2020, that I did not ban fracking. As vice president, I did not ban fracking. As president, I will not ban fracking. In 2019, I believe, uh, Mm -hmm. in a town hall, you said Mm -hmm. you were asked, would you commit to implementing a federal ban on fracking on your first day in office? And you said, there's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. So, yes. So it changed in in that campaign? In 2020, I made very clear where I stand. We are in 2024, (laughs) and I've not changed that position or the line going forward. I kept my word, and I will keep my word. That's incredible. Yeah, I, I, and she actually pushed back a little bit there she too. Did. Again, saying yeah, that was good. Uh, what, that was actually pretty and, good. And again, uh, after that, I, I, I didn't, I don't have that, but it, it talked about how <laughs> she, she asked her, uh, what was your turning point then? She did ask. Uh, she did. Uh, what was your turning point? And she didn't have an answer. She said, "I may just made it very clear that was her that was her line. She just I made stuck it very to it. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what." You're asked. Right. Make it very clear that you've already made it very clear. Right. And, you know, her her mm-hmm. argument for that, you know, obviously is that, uh, you know, I, sure, we're not going to ban fracking. We're going to do everything uh, around uh, banning fracking that fracking will not be a viable business for anyone and mm-hmm. nobody will, will want to do it. Price you out of business. But uh, we're not going to ban it. Yeah. I mean, The Rock made that clear. Uh, with coal. With coal. And they just, that's the game plan. Yep. Exactly. Um yeah, I don't know if I still have the Barack Cole situation, but let's see. Obama. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, uh, of course not. <laughs> Can't find it. Um, let's see. Oh, no. We lost it. Is that, so if somebody oh, wants to build oh, a coal power plant, oh. they can. It's <laughs> just that it will bankrupt them because they're going <laughs> to mm-hmm. be charged a huge hmm. sum for all that hmm. uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. Right. Oh. We're not going to ban it, though. Admitted. You know, they can they can go ahead and mine coal yeah, if you want. Go ahead. I want. don't care. You're just going to go bankrupt if you do. That's all. <laughs> uh, that's her game plan on that's, fracking. Yes, of course it absolutely. is. Absolutely. Of course it is. But she hasn't changed. Nope. She wants to make it clear that she made it clear in 2020 at the debate she didn't want to ban fracking, and she still doesn't want to. But when she's president, 
she will find a way to do it. I mean, they both said they were going to ban fracking, uh, Biden and her, uh, uh, as they were running for office. Biden said he was going to ban everything. And he kind of did. I mean, he made it very difficult yes, to drill. Did. Very, very yes, difficult. Did. And impossible in some areas. And then he shut down the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, and then they blew up the Russian pipeline. Oh no! I'm sorry. Oh that, no! That was that. A... That was somebody. That was a bunch of drunk Ukrainians. All right, they got together with <laughs> right some people from Denmark right. or something. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> the weirdest story. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was the Dutch. Yeah, it was, it was the, the Dutch. Dutch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Hollanders. You can't yeah. trust those. You no, can't you can't trust, the trust them. Not as far as you could throw them. No, and you I, can't. I'm pretty sure I couldn't throw them very far. No way. They got those wood shoes. Yeah, no way you could pick them. Very up. heavy. Um, <laughs> so now Harris wants to impose laws on time. What? You mentioned the Green New Deal. Mm-hmm. I have always believed, and I have worked on it, that the mm-hmm. climate crisis is real, that it is an urgent <laughs> matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves to deadlines around time. (laughs) Okay. All right. Because you know time. You know, Uh, and the significance. I think there's a significance to the the passage passage of time. time, Right? Right. The significance of the passage of time. The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage passage of time time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these yeah. jobs. And it, there is such and great significance to, to the, the passage, passage of time. time. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so significant, we want to impose laws on the passage of time. <laughs> Play that one more time. Let's see if we can make any sense out of that. What are you What are you saying here? You mentioned the Green New Deal. Yeah. Yeah, we did. She, she did. I have always believed, mm-hmm. and I have worked on it, that the climate crisis is real, <clears throat> that it is an urgent matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves oh, to deadlines around time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hold ourselves <laughs> to, deadlines to deadlines around, around time. time. <laughs> I think what she's trying to say in her weird word salad way to sound smarter than uh, absolutely she is, is that there's they've got to have time limits well yes. we're going to do it by such and such yes. a date yes. is what she's yes. kind of saying yes. but i don't think she's going to impose laws on time itself you don't know that, that would, i don't know that you're right i don't know that <laughs> she'll also appoint will she a republican in her cabinet oh hmm. will you appoint a republican to your cabinet <laughs> yes i would Anyone yes, in mind? She's not going no, to, but no she one would. In particular in mind. If she could find somebody. Yeah, let me get. Uh, this hang election, on. So I'm not Pause it for a second. Before. I'm not putting the cart I'm before gonna, the horse. Let me just say, Adam Kinzinger, uh, <laughs> would you go that far? I know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He's pretty right wing. <laughs> yeah, he really is. Super, super conservative. And he's endorsed my campaign. But man, I might go that far. As oh, to, that was what, and that's where Dana was. You know, you had us. Uh, Many Republicans come to your side during the convention. Yo, you got you got your Adam Kinzinger, you got your Liz Cheney. Right. Either of them would be terrific in this administration, oh, man. wouldn't they? Sitting on the well, they that's what, that's, would be great. But and, we don't. She's just going to think about it. Okay. Yeah. We want. We don't want to get too far out on that list. And she, like she said, she's not putting the cart before the horse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, then Dana asked about, uh, asked Tim Walls about his stolen valor scandal. The uh, country is just starting to get to know you. I want to ask uh, you a question about how you've described your service in the National Guard. Uh, you said that no, you carried no. weapons in war, but you have never deployed actually in a war zone. A campaign official said that you misspoke. Did you? Well, first of all, I'm incredibly proud. I've done 24 okay. years of work. That's not the question. No, it is not. Equally proud of my service in a public Good school classroom. He's proud. Whether it's Congress or, uh, or the proud. governor. Yeah. Uh, my record speaks for itself, but I think sure uh, people are coming to get to know me. I, I speak like they do. Um, I oh, speak he speaks candidly. like I wear we my do. my emotions on my sleeves. And, I see. Uh, I speak uh, especially no. passionately about, uh, what? In about lies? children being shot in schools and around <sighs> around guns. So uh, I think people know me. They know who I am. They yeah, know we where, do. Uh, where oh, my heart is. Yeah. And again, my record has been out there for over 40 years to, to speak for itself. And 
But the, what about the stolen idea valor? that you said that you were in war? Yeah. Did you misspeak the as the campaign has said? Yeah, I said we were talking about, in this case, this was after a school shooting, the ideas of carrying these weapons of war. And uh, my wife, the English teacher, told me my grammar is not always correct. But again, oh, if it's not this, it's an attack on my children correct. showing I love for me or it's an attack on my dog. Stop. Stop. I'm not going to do that. In the- Stop. <sighs> I speak awesome. like you speak. Yeah. I lie like you lie. Okay, uh, got it. My, my grammar is not always correct. My wife's grammar English, that has nothing to do with English grammar. <laughs> it doesn't have anything. It's a flat out lie. Absolutely, that's what it is. You can equivocate all you want and beat around the bush. He lies about it, and he's lied about it for decades. And my record speaks for itself. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. You're yes, a liar. Does. You're a lying sack. And you lie about a lot of things, yeah. including your children. And that's why people are talking about your children. Because you said they came to be through IVF and they didn't. They didn't. It was some other procedure that's not even remotely close, really, to IU, IVF. IUI or IAI, something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they it was a fertility treatment, I guess. Sure, yeah. But it's not the in vitro fertilization that he's trying to claim it was. Well, look, my record speaks for itself. <laughs> yes, it does. You're a liar. Yes. So thank you for admitting that. Wow, this was a bad interview. It's really bad. This shows you uh, how awful these people are. They, I mean, c- confronted with their garbage, they just look you right in the face and lie to you again. Yeah, absolutely. And um, really, he didn't even answer the question. I mean, he just no, danced, he did he not. Just danced around the whole no, thing. No, he didn't. That's not the question, sir. Right. Uh, Dana, 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 Dana. I mean, she did whatever. hold him a little bit accountable. A little bit. And a little, little bit. bit with Kamala. A little bit, but it was real uh, a soft accountable. Yes. A soft. A accountable. friendly accountable, for sure. Uh, Kamala wants to turn. <laughs> I love this. She wants to turn the page on the last decade. Uh, Jeffy, can you just let her do that? Can we finally move, move past on. Donald Trump? Okay. His presidency <laughs> is getting so tiresome yeah, to me right now. It's like an anchor. Yeah. I mean, it's been since 2016. I guess he's still president. He was even president before 2016. The guy's been president for how long now? A long time. Well, a decade. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, check this out. New way forward and turn the page on the last decade of what I believe has been what? Um, what? contrary to where the spirit of our country really lies. But the last decade, of course, the last three and a half years has been part of your administration. Thank I'm you! I'm talking about an era. It, uh, an era. That We're talking about, about an era. a decade ago. You're talking about, she's talking I'm about an, an era. era. <laughs> talking about an era. She did that multiple times yeah, last she night. she did. I think, sadly, in uh-huh. the last decade. Yeah, um, the last decade. We have had years. in the former president someone who has uh-huh. really been pushing an agenda uh, yeah. and an environment that an is agenda, about environment. Diminishing, um, diminishing the character and the strength of who we are as Americans. In terms of uh, uh, really <laughs> dividing our nation. And I dividing. think people are ready to turn mm-hmm. the page on that. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're uh, ready oh, to that. do that. That's want another to. thing. We want to. We're going to turn the page on the last decade i'm sorry he was in office for four years that's not a decade okay so you're indicting obama in this and joe biden if you want to turn the page on the decade it was mostly a democratic decade yes it was so i'm all about turning that page that's for sure let's turn that page let's never go back to that page ever ever again it's amazing she can sit there and get away with this. Dana, to her credit, actually said, "Yeah, the last decade, you've been in office for three and a half years. Three and a half of those. So. I'm talking about an era. <laughs> Wonder how long? It, <laughs> how long did it take for them to come I up with know. that line? I don't know. I'm but talking see, about an era. Yeah. We have to. We have to blame it on Trump. <laughs> yeah. We have to. How do we blame all of our failures on Donald Trump? Yes. Well, we talk about an era, a decade, an era, and." <laughs> An era where things got really good economically for the American she, people, right? And this is her way of you know splitting it up be, so that she can <laughs> uh, you know get away from Biden, yeah, and back to Trump again, yeah. And it's she does have to does divorce herself from Biden. She has to. It, you can't. I mean, it shouldn't logically be possible to divorce herself right. from Biden. 
but she's sure making that effort. I don't know that it was a <clears throat> smart move to do the interview. Uh, if I, I think she's been pressured into it. She's I, got. I, I know. Well, for sure, she, she has, has been pressured to. into it. But I, I don't. You know why? I, I, yeah, I know. I mean, her I people. Know. Does this interview help? Oh, it can't her? have helped her. Could it? Could this possibly? It was but, a terrible interview. Okay, but okay. with terrible answers. Okay. So, but does it hurt her with the people that are for her? I don't know. I honestly don't know. People are so stupid now. If you're this butt stupid that you're gobbling all that up. Yeah, that was really. <laughs> it's an era. Yeah, the decade. It sure era. was. Trump it's an bad. era of a decade uh, with evil Donald Trump. Trump. Yeah. Yeah, but he's been alive for seventy-eight years. We can pin the last seventy-eight years <laughs> yes, on him. Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we and his can. Dad was alive before that. It's been a Trump era. We got to turn the page on that Trump era. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Wow. I want to turn the page on her. I uh, we really... have to. We have to. It ha- that has to happen. Mm. Has to happen. What a disaster it would be if she were to be elected. Absolute disaster. And would she <clears throat> would she carry forth these policies that she now claims are her foundation, like the border wall, like being yeah. tough at the border. Uh, <laughs> like lower taxes or no tax on tips. Really? Are you going to follow through with that after you got that idea from Donald Trump and you realized how popular it was? And her distancing of of that, the border wall, was interesting because she went back to being in California. So mm-hmm. she didn't, you know, she's, that means, so she's trying to get away <laughs> from, you know, Biden, obviously, again, you know, she, uh, you know, she is. She's trying to distance yeah. that, I get it. Yep. But to go back to California, well, she, you know, most of the stuff that she did in California was wrong anyway. Yeah. And here she is, cut seven, where she's talking about uh, her failures on the U.S. border. But During none of the them are Biden hers. Harris administration, there were record numbers of illegal border crossings. Why did the Biden Harris administration wait mm-hmm. three and a half years to implement sweeping asylum restrictions? Huh. Yeah. Well, first Good. of all, first uh, of all. The root yeah. causes work that the I did as causes. vice president Pause it for I was a asked to do by the There's president. another thing they're in love with yes. for some reason. <laughs> the root causes. Well, that's, that puts her uh, not being the czar. Right. That's not my fault. I this was right. This was done from the foundation of the world. I had nothing to do with this. I, in fact, the countries I dealt with are, are fine. I, mean, <laughs> they, I went there. Now, what countries the did you deal causes, with? Uh, the like root to causes. Because she said... Right, she said uh, that those countries, uh, the uh, the the, uh, the the population from those countries on immigration have gone down. Right, with the crossing the border, the illegal, the illegal Is she crossings get into that here? from those countries, maybe yeah. the that illegal may, crossings be, be from those one. countries have gone down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So just her appearance in these countries. That's correct. Convinced people. Yeah, I don't want to go to the U.S. if she's part of it. I mean, she's working on the root cause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. that's a reminder. I'm, I'm okay with sending, right. him, sending her fine. to the other countries, then, if that works. <laughs> all right. Uh, here's the rest. Asylum restrictions. Well, first of all, uh, <laughs> the root causes work that I did as vice president that I was asked to do by the president has actually resulted in a number yeah. of benefits, including historic investments by American businesses in that region. Um, the number of uh, immigrants coming from that region has actually reduced um, since we began that work. Seriously, but that's amazing. I will say this: that okay, say it. Say Joe this. Biden and I and yeah. our administration right are terrible. Worked with members of the United States Congress uh-huh. on an immigration oh here, oh, here we go uh, issue that is it's a, very it's Trump's fault. To the yep. American people and Trump's Trump security, fault. which is the border. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And through bipartisan work, including some of the most conservative it. members of the United States Congress, Who? a bill was crafted. Yeah, a terrible bill. Which I uh, support. She a, supports. A and terrible word bill. Of this that, bill that would have it contributed to securing our border. And because he it would have granted that amnesty. it would not have helped him politically. No, that's he told not his what it was. Folks in Congress, uh-huh. don't put it forward. He killed the bill. A border He's not in office. He can't kill a bill. 1,500 He's not more in office. agents on the border. And let me tell Unreal. you something. The Border Patrol okay. endorsed the bill. I can't even listen to any more of this. And I'm sure, it's, it's, and it's I'm pathetic. Sure. It's pathetic. <laughs> it was an amnesty bill. And that's why it was it was dropped yeah. by Republicans in, in the House. 
uh, because it didn't make any sense. So she wanted that terrible bill passed. That tells you a lot about what that bill was all about. She's still about amnesty. That's one thing she has stuck to. She still wants that pathway to citizenship, which is code speak for amnesty for all the illegals that are here. And don't let them kid you in with the 11 million figure. It's more like 33 million. Easily. Easy. Easy. Then uh, protesters. Yeah, well, before, the, before this interview. Do yeah, we, have she, more were... of, we, have, we do have more from the interview, though, don't we, before we get to the protesters? Uh Oh, I, we can absolutely we can um she you know the 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 this whole setting was weird to me i i, I guess we were trying to make it home homey uh, uh, comfortable but mm-hmm. uh you know they had the bus outside and danny even thanked them well thanks for bringing your buzz <laughs> uh maybe that was her way of saying you're blocking the light from the windows mm-hmm. uh how about can you move that thing um and so and i don't know why he, he really didn't need to be there we we mentioned that i mean he looks like a you know a giant next to sitting her at the table uh a giant to both of them and he's just a doofus mm-hmm. and uh it just was the whole setting was the the lighting the, the whole cnn thing was just i just didn't understand it yeah didn't understand it yeah do yeah we, do we know where that is specifically uh, in some, I think is it, it was in, at CNN. I, no, it's in at uh, uh, Savannah, Georgia. I think is it in Savannah? Yeah, they're in Savannah. I think it was Savannah, and that and it looks like CNN <laughs> just rented. You know, told the restaurant we're taking over the place. Yeah, huh? Which is which? You know, whatever's fine. They've got. Uh, they apparently didn't clean up the tables since there's empty cups sitting on the other tables around the restaurant. So okay, whatever, fine. That's for a homey appeal. That that's to let you know. Oh, that, okay, yeah. There have we're been comfortable. Other, yeah, we're comfortable. There what? It's fine. We don't. I mean, have he to. speaks like us. You're right. Right. He, he dines like, like us. He speaks like us. He is us. It's so great. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're all lying sacks of crap. Then. Yeah. Communist liars. Pathetic. Just a pathetic record speaks interview. for itself. Yeah, record speaks. Well, for he's itself. right about that. He's right about that. And so does the video from his time as governor of Minnesota during an incredible crisis where he just allowed Minneapolis to burn to the ground, yeah. practically. I mean, the fires and the riots and the uh, theft and looting and all the stuff that he just sat there and watched sure for did. days we all, before he finally did we anything. We all witnessed it. it. Yeah, we, we did. We all witnessed yes, it. Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, it was It was terrible. <clears throat> And, you know, he is, his wife is home with the windows open, smelling the fires. And she left the windows open so she could continue to smell the sweet scent of dissension, I guess. Uh, uh, I, uh, of chaos, uh, 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 of rioting. The sweet scent. Of yes. violence in yeah. the streets. It's so beautiful. That Isn't is. that beautiful? It is. Yeah. It is. What a weird family. Really weird. Really weird. And he talked about, uh, they did ask him a little, Dan, Dan talked to him about uh, uh, the fertility treatments as well, which he didn't answer, of course. I mean, that's, Of course not. I mean, he, he can't, he has no answer for that. He talks the way you talk, Jeffy. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Through lying. <laughs> <laughs> he is speaking to me when he says yes, that. There's right. no doubt about right. that. So you can yeah. really relate I can, to that. I yeah. can. Tim and I are yeah. copacetic that way, man. <laughs> <laughs> love him <laughs> uh i i i would have loved to have attended the strategy meetings where oh yeah they prepared for this particular interview and all the things they knew were coming and maybe trump shouldn't have listed the questions because then that prepared them for the questions that came oh yeah that's possible yeah and that's they, possible. And so they came up with some answers. They did. They the definitely thing, did. Thing, the yeah, we inherited a big problem. So first we had to clean up that mess. Yep. My values haven't changed. My values haven't changed. Uh, that was a big even push for her. All of her positions have. Well, then okay, if that's true, your values haven't changed, but all your policies have. That means you're just saying it to get elected. And that, well, at one point uh, she asked, you know, what was the the changing point. And she didn't have an answer for no, that. No, she doesn't, because there is no answer for that. And then you got Walls preparing, oh, I, I speak the way you speak. <laughs> Us okay. Minnesotans. All right.
Don't forget, uh, we've got this uh, special day on UFOs coming up with Luis Elizondo. Unleashed. Welcome. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Got a few tweets here. Uh, Nancy's vodka soaked dentures tweets. Is it already time for the for Pat's annual baby seal clubbing trip? Yeah, it's getting very close now to <laughs> head to Newfoundland for that. Uh, very exciting time of year. Pat Patriot Beagles two tweets. Aliens are among us. About twenty five million of them uh, that we know about. Yes, yes. Uh, not space aliens. Thought you said 30, are illegal aliens. Thought you said 33. I that did say 33. It might be 40 or 50. I don't know. It's it's a lot. Uh, Lady Leah, it was nothing more than her taking five minutes to not answer each question. Hashtag yeah. ridiculous. Uh, feral carnivore, the reason CNN had live in the corner on a pre-recorded video was to differentiate her from the shambling corpse that is Joe Biden. Is that what it was? Okay. I, All right. That's amazing, though. It is It is interesting that, I mean, throughout the entire interview, and you look put at those up clips, any of the, just still any of the shots clips there, they all have the live... Uh, so the live. CNN's lying as they're doing the yes. interview. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was not live. It was recorded. Incredible. Yeah. Bulldog Mama uh, makes the point, as bad as the Kamala interview uh, was last night. Don't forget, it was pre-recorded. That disaster was probably the best of her, of the footage. Well, I'm sure yeah. it was. And they now, I will say, Dana said and again, it's CNN and Dana Bash, but she's. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure she opened the the show with saying that it was unedited. Um, now, mm. I, I don't know if she meant that you know each question and answer was unedited. You yeah. know, that's, that's probably what her where she's drawing the line that each question and answer was unedited. Even know? if that's true, the live is still misleading. It's a lie. Correct. It's a lie. Oh, oh you can no do question. live to tape. No like question. We were we actually just recorded everything and we didn't edit it. Uh but you can't just say live when it's not. And I was under the impression that CNN mm-hmm. said they were not going to release the actual uh full transcript of the interaction. So that leads one interesting. To, that leads one that's to think that they uh, did do some editing. Yeah, it does lead you to believe, or one. It leads one to believe that. It's a good point, Jeffy. <laughs> Uncle Waldo too tweets my new excuse when I misspeak. Grammar made me do it. <laughs> like my wife, the English teacher, yeah. you know, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> he says, "Yeah." Oh. So you can blame your lies on grammar. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, these That's people, awesome. What are they going to do? That's next? awesome. It's in. It's incredible. It really is. Uh, all right, there's a few other cuts that we wanted to share. Um, uh, I guess at the uh, at the rally in Georgia, some protesters crashed the party. Yeah, and uh, you know she uh, she did this big rally before her sp- before the interview, and uh, there were a couple things that uh, happened. Uh, maybe she was just focused on doing the interview, but like when the protesters come in, it really flusters her. Man, she does not mm-hmm. quite know what to do. And across our nation, in addition to that. We are witnessing. Are these the uh, Palestinian people? On other Good. hard fought, hard won. You gave birth to these oh, people. Oh, yeah. Let's pause it for just a second. Okay, yes, you did. And remember, during this interview with uh, Dana Bash, she went back to the two state solution. Oh, yeah. Okay. She went back to the two state solution. Yeah. Well, they and always she do. did it. She, abs- and she said she absolutely is for Israel. Mm hmm. Uh, you're not for Israel if you're no, for a two-state no, solution. No, look, I'm I'm 100 percent behind Israel. However, mm-hmm. uh, there's so many Palestinians have lost their lives. It's been offered, and we went through the thing. We went through the list last yeah. last week sometime. Um, it's been offered over and over and over. Who rejects it? Not Israel. The Palestinians. But the deal. Do. She was big on the deal has to get done. The peace deal has to get done. So many mm-hmm. Palestinians have lost their lives. Bad. Sure. Yeah. Is that the whole yeah. Israel thing? Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Right. But so many Palestinians so many. have lost their and lives. And they continue to. Yeah. And it's all women and children. There's not been a single <laughs> male killed in this that's war. Correct. It's all women and children. 40,000 women and children. <laughs> USA so the Today deal has just, to get done. They just dutifully reported that figure again. Uh, I think in, in the latest story they wrote about, about the issue. Uh, and 
at the very end of all of these stats that they give, according to the Palestinian yeah. health yeah. authority, it's Hamas. Yeah. That's who's giving you those statistics. Hamas. And they don't even question it. They don't even question it. It's really. Numbers may vary. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And, and her, and uh, anyway, and then she goes, she, mm. you know, talked to, uh, just killed me that uh, I 100% uh, was with Israel. I am unwavering, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. unwavering with Israel. But we got to get a deal done. Pal- too many Palestinians are dying. And I certainly couldn't get a Jew as my running mate. You know that, right? <laughs> right. I just could not you know choose that. a Jew. I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, I think we all uh, no. and look, we all support Israel. It's not but... good enough. That's not what they want. No. It's I not. mean, there's still, there's, you know, she could, she could talk about a two-state solution until the cows come home. Yeah. Or put the cart before the horse like she doesn't want to do. Uh, but that's not, they don't care. They don't care. That's not what they want. Mm-hmm. It's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And she uh, also had a, uh, she brought out the accent again, which I love. Uh, you know, Obama used to do this all the time, too. Yep. And uh, it just, it's just brings out a, a smile to my face is all. And I will tell you, when we get this done together, my friend, <laughs> and when I am president, I will take on the bad actors who exploit a crisis. Hold on. You know what I'm saying? Hold, Hold, on. On. Hold, on. Yeah. Hold, Hold on. on. Here's the thing. Here's the the thing. courts are going to handle that. We're going to beat them in November. We're going to beat them in November. Yeah. Yeah. No. We're going to handle that. We'll beat them in November. We're going to beat them. We'll handle that. <laughs> and you all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. Yeah. That is an Obama thing. Yeah. 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 Barack Obama Jr. will bump. <laughs> and then <laughs> Barack Obama Jr. will bump. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's not how you speak. You know, we got enough information. We've got enough evidence of the way you speak to know that's not it. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for the pandering to your audience. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's really awesome. And she uh, definitely had a Biden moment as well. Mm. Um, I hope uh, this, I looked, this, this, this clip is 14 seconds long, so I'm hoping this is the entire piece. But it it's, was absolutely <laughs> so much fun to watch. He even called for termination of the United States Supreme, the, the, the supreme land of our nation, what? the United States Constitution. Uh, it, <laughs> what? Uh, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, what are you trying to say there? <laughs> he even called uh, for termination awesome. of the, term- the United States Supreme the, co- the, the, the supreme the, land, the supreme of, land our nation, of our nation, the United States the, Constitution. Uh, the United States Constitution is the supreme land yes. of our... Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> I don't think you know what the Constitution is they're putting. So uh, the... the, uh, wow. the uh, actually... Uh, the teleprompter must have got messed up. Must have, because she, she was supposed to be the you know the Supreme Court. She's bashing Trump. For, yeah, but is she is she trying to get to he insulted the Constitution or the Supreme Court or he ignored the Supreme Court like her boss Joe Biden is doing or what exactly is that point? I don't know. <laughs> She's all over the place. I don't know, so. but I love it. Yeah, it was great. One more time, just <laughs> for fun. Supreme. The, co- the, the, the supreme land, supreme of, land our nation, of our nation, the United nation. States Constitution. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's clear. That's know, perfectly clear right there. It. All right. Let me tell you about the best-selling uh, Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifier, <clears throat> which uses Oxy technology to quickly destroy viruses, odors, mold, and so much more. It's just this handy little unit right here. You won't believe how well this thing works for its size. You just pop up the plug-in, you stick it into the outlet, and you turn it on, and it goes to work for you to destroy, you know, cigarette smell or uh, fish odors that linger for days if you don't do something about it, or litter boxes or diapers, whatever the smell is that is offensive to you, this will take care of it. It sends out O3 molecules, which destroy those odors. So right now, you can uh, you can get the Eden Pure thunderstorm three pack for two hundred dollars off so for under two hundred dollars you will get these three uh handy units and use it for whole home protection and it'll get rid of all of the nasty odors in your house plus there's no filters to ever change so 
it's just such an awesome unit. It's it's really fun to talk about something that actually does, in fact, work. EdenPureDeals.com. Go there, use the discount code PAT3, and save $200. EdenPureDeals.com, discount code PAT3. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Yeah, with a fat five. Oh, I, I was just going to... I was joking. No problem. Let's do one because yeah. uh, he even called for the termination of the United States Supreme... The, the supreme land of our nation, the United States Constitution. <laughs> so... Brilliant. Good, brilliant words from, yeah, uh, brilliant. from Kamala Harris. That's powerful. Um, I, I didn't put this in the fat five, but I have to talk about this. Yesterday, we I talked about on Chewing the Fat, which you should subscribe to, by the way, my daily show, Chewing the Fat, uh, with Jeff Fisher, available wherever you get your podcast. I talked about a Wells Fargo employee in Tempe, Arizona, who was so weird. found at her desk, sad. slumped over, dead. Mm-hmm. Very sad. Uh, Denise Prudham, she's 60 years old. Uh, it's the bank's corporate office. I guess the article must have been written by Wells Fargo because the article that I read yesterday talked about how uh, the the manager had sent her an email and she didn't answer it. And he went down to find out, hey, why why aren't you answering my email? Mm. And there she was. And so she was, she was dead. dead. And it was so like, he's it like, made oh, it appear okay. like, oh, well, I guess you got shoot. a pretty good excuse then for not answering the, my email. You uh, may not get fired yeah. now. It was one of those yeah, deals. This is how you do it. Yeah. If you don't return my emails, this is the only reason. Okay. <laughs> but now we find out that it wasn't like the manager hadn't heard from her in a few hours. Right. It was days. Four days. The she, last time her card scanned into the building was the Friday. She sat there dead for four well, days. I mean, we're guessing she said she was, I don't know if she was dead the entire time, but she was, she had, she, Clocked in Friday or scanned her card on Friday and had not mm-hmm. had not gone out, had not scanned out when they found her on Tuesday. Incredible. Just amazing. Yeah. I mean, and sad, right? I mean, very. Because nobody in the office found her. Nobody that's goes what I mean, by nobody, to check on her. There's no, not a, in four days. And nobody, is nobody at home from, wondering where she is and how she hasn't returned home from work? Right. Do you not have family or friends or anybody who would be concerned a, in four on days? On top of that, yeah. I mean, there's, there's not a cleaning person that wow. comes by and says, hey, right. Denise, how you? Whoa, hey. Whoa. Denise isn't looking too well. <laughs> I mean, and they, they even say in this latest updated wow. story that uh, the employees on Monday, uh, you know, I don't know if you know smell this, Pat, but uh, the bodies start mm-hmm. to decompose and I've heard uh, that. they have an odor yeah. to them. Yeah. That's what I've heard, yeah. And I mean, I'm sure Denise was. Probably getting a little stuck in the chair. Yeah, uh, as the bodies. I know, I know, but they noticed a foul smell and they figured that's ah, just something. It's the AC or something. So they obviously don't have. They thought uh, the plumbing was backed up. They obviously don't have Eden Pure at the right. Uh, right. at the Wells Fargo corporate <laughs> offices when they should. <laughs> they sure should. Uh, uh, so should anyone uh, have the. Uh, Eat pure wherever you think bad smells are going to be, well, but yeah, especially dead body smells. You don't want those around. No, you do right? not. You don't want that lingering. Uh, can I quote you on that? <laughs> you actually, can. you can. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I just it's so sad. It but, is sad. But, but come on now. I know it's crazy. four days. It's amazing. No, no one, not a single person, not a single coworker walked by there and said, "Hey, you're looking a little peaked." Hey. <laughs> You feel it okay? I mean, there's Dolores or hey, whatever her name Denise. is. Denise. 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 <laughs> See, there's the problem. Nobody, I, nobody even knows knew her, her name. name. So maybe they, they need to put names up on the cubicles <laughs> so they know. So just knock on the window and say, "Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hon, you, you okay in there?" <laughs> you don't know. I her think name. she That's had a all. window, right? The cubicles just have the little. Oh you know, yeah, right just in there, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> just terrible. Wow, I just really sad. It, and it and if you know, if she does have family, <clears throat> where were? Are you? they sad? Are they sad? Or are they just like ha- we were happy she didn't come home Friday night? Uh, yeah, I don't. Know. We, we don't know what happened to her all weekend. So mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it's crazy. I, I don't understand how someone can be in the a cubby at some business for four days without someone. Yeah, noticing. I don't either. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me because I, mm. I definitely would be. Personally, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't mm-hmm. be able to walk by the cubby and not say something. 
No, like, what are you true. still doing here? What, is, what's going on? Right. Wow. Hey, haven't you been here for like four days? Are oh, you falling asleep on the job, huh? Something's <laughs> going on. Over, hey, and then if you don't get any reaction, then yeah, you gotta. Right. Hey, Denise, what do you? Oh, oh, what's going you on? You feel a little chilly <laughs> right now. <laughs> hmm. I've always wanted this mug. I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, we can, so I got a couple of quick stories uh, we could talk about on uh, here for the Fast Five. Oh, uh, the Polaris Dawn launch. Uh, that's still postponed, uh, by the way. It's still, uh, the Polaris Dawn is just sitting on the launch pad, uh, waiting to take off. Why? Why are they waiting to take off? Pat, now, sure, they postponed the first well, one due to as technical you see in this issues. Picture, you see off in the distance there. There's clouds. That's correct. There's clouds. Uh, that's correct. Uh, the first one yeah, was due to clear, technical but there issues. Are clouds but visible? We are waiting uh, for weather concerns, mm-hmm. and they're waiting for weather concerns at the end of the mission. So they're t- they're actually okay. they're concerned that like, the weather might be fine now, but it won't be when they need to return. And so they're so waiting. So it's delayed. It's delayed. Okay. Uh, we are not ready for prime time. So we absolutely have to know that it's going to be perfect weather for what a week. In yeah. advance, yeah, and uh, until that time, we can't. It launch. sits on the pad, and they're yeah. under. I don't even know the, the FAA uh, grounded the uh, the the uh, what was it? their gosh darn it. Uh, they the Musk sent up satellites on Wednesday, okay, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a problem with the Falcon Nine rocket coming back the failed booster uh landing attempt at sea there was a problem with that so the faa said "Ooh, the falcon 9 rockets we need to put those on hold so this is just another way i think that the government is you know uh just slapping around elon a little bit mm-hmm. uh you know to calm him down so i don't i'm not quite sure if that it has anything to do with the delay i think it did the first time and then now the weather is holding it up so who knows when this thing is going to happen and I, you know, more hatred of Elon happens out of San Francisco because he said he's going to leave San Fran. X, he's pulling uh, X out of San Francisco, and they're going to leave on uh, Friday the thirteenth, which I find interesting. Mm. And uh, the mayor said, uh, hey, "Look, I'm not going to beg anybody. I'm not going to beg anybody to stay in my city." <laughs> and the city attorney said, uh, "Good riddance. Okay, get out of here." You were gone already. And the, the chief economist for the city said, yeah, it's not going to impact our revenue. Oh, so okay. Good rinse. Right. Get out of here. Yeah, they were only, I don't know, $780 million uh, deficit in 2023. So hmm. good rinse. Yeah, they're Get not going to miss here. that money at all. Get that's, out of here. That's fine. <laughs> Have that attitude. Let's see yeah, how, how that works out for California. Absolutely. That's great. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. All right. We got uh, Lou Elizondo. Oh, yeah. All right. Awesome. From imminent uh, hunting for UFOs, we'll talk to him next. Pat Gray Unleashed. Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Good morning, Americans. It's Friday. Isn't it, though? Welcome. 888 900 Pat Unleashed on Twitter. <clears throat> Are we having some technical problems with uh, with Lou Elizondo? Yes. No. Yes. Mm-hmm. Maybe. No. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. No. Perhaps. No. We're... I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm, I'm talking oh. to you right now. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you? Uh, I, can, I can hear him in my ear, in one ear. So something's not. Ah, there he is. Hey, Lou. Uh, hey guys, can place? you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah, I can. I can hear you. I no. Think, I think there's something wrong. Can you hear him at all? No. You can't hear him at all. I not not zero. Really? Yeah. Okay. I can hear you guys just fine. Okay. Now he's hearing us, but but Jeffy's not getting him. So just go talk, <clears throat> talk to Lou so. Elizondo. And <laughs> tell Lou I said hi. Hang on just a minute, Lou. We'll try to get this figured out and uh, no worries. See if we, yeah, see if we can get you on here uh, properly. Um, we're going to be talking to him about UFOs, the Pentagon's hunt for UFOs. He's got a new book called Imminent. Yeah, I mean, this guy, <clears throat> Lou, is the former head of the Pentagon program yeah. responsible yes. for the investigation of UFOs. 
um, which is now known as the unidentified anomalous phenomenon. Which is stupid. UAP. Just call them UFOs. <laughs> why, why do we have to Everyone change knows them? UFOs. Come on. That's what the- yeah, and UAP just doesn't have the same feel. No, it does not. It doesn't have the same vibe, the same je ne sais quoi, Thank you. if Thank you, you will. <laughs> uh, so he's the former head of the Department of Defense's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Uh, so that's kind of cool. So it's a long business that's, card. Yeah, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Uh, and so we have we figured anything out yet? Apparently not. Oh boy. Yeah. Hmm. Wh- what? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so is he's on Skype now? Okay. Tell you we have. I'm on Skype, guys. Okay. Uh, Hello. So Lou, Lou welcome. Uh, go ahead and uh, tell us about uh, how you came to be the former head of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, uh, and and how did that develop? Sure. Uh, well, my background, actually, before I ever was in the government, I uh, I went to school to be a microbiologist and immunologist. So uh, I've always been f- fair, a disciple of the of the scientific method. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, I went into the army for uh, a brief period and then was recruited into some programs in, in military intelligence. And I became a special agent uh, for counterintelligence, investigating primarily counterterrorism and uh, and espionage investigations. So always been very fact driven, uh, fact oriented. Um, in 2008, I was over at the director of national intelligence. And at the time, my family and I lived on a little island in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay because uh, I didn't want to really raise my family in the middle of a big city if I if I didn't you know, if I could help it. Mm-hmm. So the commute was terrible and it was about three hours one way. Uh, sometimes I'd spend more time actually in the car than I did even at work. So I got an offer to go back to the Pentagon for, for about a year or so. Um, I did that to start a program to help better integrate national intelligence information to law enforcement folks at the local local levels. And while I was there, some people approached me and uh, after several meetings and some discussions, I I did not know what the program was about. They wouldn't tell me, um, but they said they needed somebody with a certain amount of expertise, Mm -hmm. type of expertise. And uh, next thing I knew, I had a meeting with the director of at the time of OSAP, which was kind of the umbrella program. And uh, he was a rocket scientist for the Defense Intelligence Agency, probably, if not the world's premier rocket scientist. And I don't say that lightly because there's a lot of good rocket scientists that work for the U.S. government. Right. And uh, towards the end of the conversation, he looked at me dead in the eyes. And he said, uh, what do you think of UFOs? And, um, mm-hmm. I thought for a second and I told him, I, I don't. And he yeah. said, well, what do you, what do you mean? You don't think you don't believe in them? I said, no, I, I didn't say that. You asked me what I thought about them. And the answer is I don't, I've never really given much consideration to them. I'm too, you know, frankly, too busy chasing bad guys, uh, and, and doing other work. Um, I, I'm and not how particularly long ago was this Lou. How long ago was that? 2009. So I came to the Pentagon back in 2008, and it was right about early 2009 that I started really getting integrated into this into this new program, and the rest is, as they say, is history. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, All right. So in the beginning, you didn't even think about UFOs. You weren't into it, Uh, but obviously, since um, that's that's changed a great deal. And uh, now you not only, I mean, you not only believe that we, we see these UFOs and they're not from this planet, right? They're, they're not uh, on world technology, uh, but I, I, you do believe that aliens are among us now? Well, I, you know, I don't like to use the word alien. We, we, I tend to use non-human intelligence because whenever you say uh, alien, people human. think automatically they're from out there. And quite frankly, we, we don't know yet. We, we, need, oh. we need more information. We need more data. Okay. Uh, it's pretty compelling that it's, it's not us, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to say, you know, the word to term aliens, I, I tend to stay away from that. Okay. Cause I'm, I'm not sure we really know yet. Are you mm-hmm. positive that it isn't us? We are very... Very certain. Um, look, you've already had a former director of national intelligence, a former director of the CIA, and even a former president of the United States all come out on the record and say, look, guys, there's something to this. Um, you know, there, these are definitely there's something that we should be looking at. It's not our technology. The government's already come out and said it's not our technology. Right. We're pretty sure it's not foreign adversarial technology. So, you know, that kind of limits. Right. Your possibilities when, you, could be. when you first got started and you, uh, you know, you questioned, you know, didn't even think about it, actually, I believe was what you said. You didn't even give it real much thought. So it really didn't exist. You said that you went to a meeting that showed you uh, 
that there was uh, beyond next generation technology, and uh, that it had been that it had been happening for quite some time. Right? Is that is that what actually flipped you and drove you to the? I mean, I'm, I'm going to call it an obsession, but what you do now? So there's, you know, I've in my my experience, people there's two types of people that handle this information. They handle it a little bit differently. The first. Uh, category of people tend to have this this epiphany, this revelation, this aha moment, and all of a sudden, you know, they they become these instantaneous believers. And then you have another category of people, which is probably where I, I fall into, which was more of a slow and steady realization based upon the gun camera footage, based upon the radar data, based upon the eyewitness testimony of our, of our fighter pilots. Um, to me, it was a more gradual realization. But what you're referring to was a dinner that we had with a, a Brazilian general, General Uchoa, who led a uh, Brazilian investigation uh, for the Brazilian government in a place called Colares, Brazil. Love that place. Where, mm-hmm. Yeah, where uh, UAPs were encountered by by the locals and and by the Brazilian government. Um, but that's mm. that's not uh, that's not unique. There's other countries and other places that have. Uh, similar experiences and have documented those and in some cases even shared those experiences with the u.s government if it's if it, i'm still a little kind of hung up on if it's not us and it's not one of our adversaries and it may not be space aliens then what could this non-human presence be where would they you have any thoughts on where they would have come from yeah, I mean, we've 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 often when people ask, you know, they're from quote unquote outer space. Um, our response is, you know, pretty consistent. Look, they could be from outer space, inner space, or frankly, the space in between. There's a lot of options. Um, case in point, you know, when I was when I was in in, in school, um, we learned about uh, basically two fundamental kingdoms of life, and you are a plant or you're an animal, and it was the Greeks who proposed this. And it wasn't until the Renaissance uh, and Enlightenment we discovered this entire kingdom of life form that we've been cohabitating here on the planet with all along. And that was the world of fungus. And they are neither plants nor animals. They are their own distinct life form. And and if you think about this, um, it was only in the last 120 years that mankind actually discovered the true alpha kingdom of life on this planet. And in fact, if you take all the biomass of every plant and all the biomass of every animal and all the biomass of every fungus, add it all up together, it still doesn't add up to this hidden kingdom of life that's always been on this planet that's the true dominant life form. And it wasn't until we could curve glass and look through a little metal tube and famously shout, little beasties, little beasties, <laughs> did we discover uh, the world of microorganisms. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're pervasive and they're everywhere. So so we're always learning that you know life can can exist here on Earth and frankly can 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 coexist with us all along. And maybe these things are just as natural to earth as we are. Maybe we're at the point where technologically now we're beginning to, we can interact with it, or perhaps these things are maybe from underwater. Look, we've, we've only mapped less than 10% of the ocean floor. We, we know more about the moon than we know about our own oceans. Uh, And I think that's important that we keep an open mind. And and I've always said, keep all, all options on the table until they are no longer on the table. Um, that's eh, really interesting. So it That's sounds true. like you're leaning toward that, that, it, that it's an earthly presence, but it's just not plant or animal necessarily. It's not it's not human, but it also isn't from space. Is that is that what you're leaning towards? It, I don't know. You know, I you think know. this is why we need to have the conversation. We need mm-hmm. more data. Look, this is we live in a fascinating universe. Right. So we can only perceive with our five fundamental senses, you know, very little. So if you can't touch it, taste it, hear it, smell it, etc., it's very hard for us to interact with 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 nature. For example, if you look at the night skies where I live here, uh, you can see beautiful stars. But if you look at that same part of the night sky with a radio telescope, all of a sudden now a whole reality is in front of you. you begin to see nebula. You see things in an ultraviolet and infrared spectrum and, and a whole other reality. Uh, we only perceive a very, very narrow sliver, and we call it the... Uh, uh, you know, electro-optical spectrum. Uh, but in real life, most of nature lies beyond that. And mm-hmm. then you have, of course, a size issue. Um, the, the, the universe is, is incredibly huge. It, it's 13.9, the, in any direction, you can see the universe's horizon to where light, basically the, the limitations of where light reaches our eyes, is about 13.9 billion, with a B, billion light years. Now, you think about that, light travels at 186,000 miles per second. 
roughly seven and a half times around our planet in one second. Imagine how far it goes in a year, and then imagine how far light can travel in 13.9 billion years, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about that scale, and then we are this infinitesimally small speck somewhere in the middle there, and the universe is actually much bigger than that, most scientists believe. If you look at, you compare us to one molecule, one, one hydrogen atom, uh, which is uh, Avogadro's number, one times 10 to the negative, you know, do the math. It's roughly the same order of magnitude, meaning there's an entire universe inside every human being. And so my point being is hmm. we as humans can only interact with roughly one order of magnitude up or down. Otherwise, simply the universe is too big or too small. Right. Uh, and so there's a lot of options of what this could be. We're learning a lot now with quantum physics uh, as well, how you know we learned that space and time is flexible through Einstein. And now we're learning through quantum physics um, that there's this whole nother universe that operates almost what appears to be different set of rules. And yet that is how how the universe works at the very, very small. So again, not to be evasive here, but there's a lot of options of what this could be. And so I'm very careful not to offer a single opinion because I don't mm. think we really know yet. It's interesting too, because you, you mentioned the technology that they possess um, where it would take one of our fighter jets, if he was to be going at top, what, 3,200 miles per hour, it would take him almost half the state of Ohio to take a right turn. Whereas like, the technology involved that we're talking about can be going 13,000 miles per hour and and make a 90-degree turn. Um, right. That kind of technology is fairly impressive, and we have no idea <laughs> how it works. Um, so if they're here and they've got that kind of technology, which is so vastly beyond our own, they must be friendly, right? Because otherwise, we wouldn't be here anymore. Well, not necessarily. I mean, yes, one could certainly argue that. Uh, but there's a flip side to the coin. Um, you know, we do see these UAP very interested in our nuclear capabilities and nuclear technology. Yeah. Uh, they can fly unimpeded over our controlled U.S. airspace. In some cases, they've been a flight safety issue. They've come very close to our uh, naval aircraft, combat aircraft. Um, and they have been able to disable, in some cases, our, our, our nuclear capabilities. And. Mm. In, in Russia, it appears that they've actually been able to turn them on. Um, oh, wow. You know, people say they're here for friendly things and they want to stop us from blowing ourselves up. But really, there's no evidence to suggest that. In fact, if you look at it, uh, they didn't stop us uh, in World War II dropping the bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They didn't stop us testing atomic uh, might weapons. Might have been a holiday. They might have been off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, sure. You know, um, uh, they also didn't interfere in other other, you know, Chernobyl, yeah, disaster. Now, they didn't Chernobyl didn't help at all. Fukushima, yeah. Three Mile Island. They, right? they didn't stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons to all these other countries. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's hard to say that they're here for peace. But understand from a national security perspective, if you can take, you know, your, your civilian hat off for a second and put on your your, your military hat. Let's just assume there's even only a 5% chance these things here are for, for malevolent reasons. Mm -hmm. um, you can't take a chance, right? So you have yeah. to do whatever yeah. you can. There's a, if, if I, you don't mind, gentlemen, to kind of emphasize this point for your, for your audience, um, do you gentlemen lock your, let me ask you a question. Do you lock your front door before you go to bed at night? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I, yes. you know what? I do too. And most of us would agree, look, you might live in a safe neighborhood, safe mm -hmm. house, but most of us do that. Yeah. Some even go the next step and check your windows, make sure they're locked and even turn the alarm system on. Let's say, let's say one morning, some Sunday morning, you come downstairs to have a nice hot cup of coffee or tea. And as you come downstairs, you see size 12 muddy boot prints in your living room carpet that right. were not there the night before. Now, yeah. no one's been hurt. Nothing's been taken. Nothing's out of place, but despite There's you a locking the doors, There's a problem. The, the, Mm -hmm. That's yes. right. Uh, mm -hmm. So my question to you, is it a threat? And my response is, it could be if it wanted to be. So we should could probably be. figure yeah, out yeah. you know, yeah. how it's getting in. That's yeah. a really good point. That, that is a great analogy. Uh, we are speaking to the former head of the Department of Defense's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, Lou Elizondo. We'll get back to uh, more with him coming up in a minute. First of all, imagine if you had the ability to just wave your hand and abortion would no longer be legal. Imagine all the lives you could save in that moment. Tragically, nah, it's not reality. Uh, that's not where we are right now. No, it is not. In fact, uh, the overturning by the Supreme Court of Roe v. Wade simply made them more determined, and there were more abortions last year nationwide, over a million of them, than there have ever been before. And we're on a record pace again 
this year. But the good news is you can save unborn lives by donating to the preborn ministry. Preborn empowers young expectant mothers in crisis to choose life. How do they do that? By showing the mother the ultrasound and introducing the mother to her baby and the life that's growing inside of her. Uh, it's an amazing realization. We've all been through it who have children and seen the ultrasounds yes. and posted them on our fridges and all of that kind of stuff. It's It makes a big difference. And that's why it doubles the chance sure that the does. baby will be born alive. That's why we're proud to be affiliated with this organization. Not only working to save lives, but succeeding at saving lives. We can't shut down abortions overnight. But we can work together to change hearts and minds of expectant mothers by introducing them for the first time to their babies. So if you can donate whatever uh, you can afford, it would be greatly appreciated. If it's $28, that's enough to show a mother one uh, ultrasound. If you could do five, that's $140. Whatever you can donate. Don't make your best donation by dialing pound 250. Say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, keyword baby. Or just go to preborn.com slash pat. Pat Gray Unleashed. Welcome, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, we're speaking with the former head of the Department of Defense's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, Lou Elizondo. Uh, fascinating subject about um, UFOs, or as the government calls them, UAPs. I don't know why they had to switch that because that's kind of dumb, actually. It, uh, it's silly. I think. I think. Uh, I think what the deal was, and maybe. Lou can correct us on this if it's not accurate, but it seems like the government is embarrassed by the term, and so they had to come up with their own. Is that is that kind of why it's switched from UFO to UAP? Uh, actually, there's, there's there's a few reasons. Uh, first and foremost, you're right. Uh, there's a lot of stigma and taboo associated yeah. <laughs> with the term UFO. Uh, but the truth is that uh, the term UFO isn't even really accurate. Uh, yeah. When it first came out, people were calling it an unidentified flying object, mm -hmm. which means you have something that, uh, in essence, like an airplane, yeah. right? You have four yeah. fundamental forces, yeah. thrust, lift, drag, and weight, and you create wings. And with wings, you fly. But these things don't have wings. They don't have rudders or ailerons. Uh, and in fact, uh, we see them more than just seeing them in the sky. They, we actually see them underwater and in, in high uh, high altitude and potentially well, low Earth orbit. Hmm. So you, know, you say that, that we see them. But, you know, uh, Pat and I were discussing uh, actually seeing them. Um, yeah, with, well, you would think with our technology, the technology we possess now, we'd have clearer images of them. I mean, we always see these blurry are we just not dots seeing them? somewhere. How, how are, is it that we are, don't have a clear... The ones, yeah, the ones available well, we to us? We do. We have clear oh, we images right of them? Now it's classified. No, we have yeah. ultra 4K oh, okay. so we're not high seeing definition them. video. Oh, absolutely. Really? We do. Yes. Oh, I would love to see that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I would yes, love to I, see I would that. I would as well. So, of the so, actual the vehicles, the UAPs? Yeah, I mean, for, yeah. unfortunately, the, the the grainy ones you see are the ones that are unclassified, and the government has <laughs> agreed to release, mm -hmm. um, which is nice of them. Know, yeah, a lot of a lot of times, you know, you the government's very, very sensitive about revealing its capabilities, particularly from an intelligence collection platform. Mm -hmm. You don't want to let the enemy know just you know how how good your stuff well, is. We're too dumb. Know? We can't handle it. So. so <laughs> Well, the enemy, not letting the enemy know is kind of understandable. Yeah. Um, but so you do, you you have seen them? You've seen these photos? Oh, yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah. not just oh, yeah. photos. Yeah, and, and wow. same with my colleagues in the program. Uh, when when I was with, with ATIP, I had my own cadre of people that I directed, and there was another group of people as well that we worked together. Uh, they were from other agencies, other organizations. Yeah, so what made you, it, speaking of that, and I know you've seen them and you had all these pictures, but, you know, you worked for the government for quite some time, and then now you're, you know, civilian uh are, do you still are you still able to have access to everything that you had no i mean obviously not everything but most things that you had access to prior to becoming a civilian so i i still maintain my my top secret security clearance uh and i uh i have been asked in the past to help the government um i have been a contractor as well and a consultant okay. and when i am asked to provide information or help help the government i, I still provide that assistance when asked okay. Now, have you? you uh, I believe you claim in the you say in the book that um, we have set traps for them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> tell me about that. Sure. Uh, we set up a program was called uh, the operation was Operation Interloper, uh, mm -hmm. and in essence, we do know 
through our observations that UAP seem to be very interested in our nuclear equities mm -hmm. and also seem to be found in and around bodies of water. So uh, no bigger, you know, footprint, nuclear footprint than a, a carrier strike group. You have a nuclear powered uh, aircraft carrier. You have uh, aircraft that are also capable of potentially de delivering um you know, nuclear capabilities. You have boats and submarines in the area that may be nuclear powered and may also themselves have some sort of nuclear capabilities on board. Right. So the idea was to uh, set a, you're right, like a honeypot. What we would do is create this irresistibly large uh, nuclear footprint in the ocean, um, frankly, in some cases, bigger than the entire state of, of, of New York uh, with all the, the wow. nuclear technology that we have. And then what we would do is uh, we... We would wait for the UAP to show up and then spring the trap. In essence, um, at a certain point, turn on all the collection capabilities we have in the area from the various sources and try to collect telemetry and, and yeah. other, other information to give us a better sight picture on their capabilities. Um, it went all the way through the joint staff. Um, it was getting a lot of support. And then at the very last minute, it was killed at, uh, at the highest levels. Uh, we were never told why. Um, Mm, but, cool. uh, so the, so the was, actual trapping never never, never happened. happened. Yeah, we had to correct. We had the plan uh, established, and it. it was getting coordinated through the Pentagon uh, with the various agencies as well, other agencies, intelligence agencies. Uh, but at the last minute, at the very last second, it was uh, it was it was it was turned off. And obviously, we don't know why. But why did why is that? Lou, I mean, I mean, I get that we don't know, but why? Well, why we have that? we have some speculation that we were getting too close to another another perhaps UAP program that was being run uh, simultaneously in the government. Uh, we can't prove it. Mm. Uh, we do know that the government has had a long standing interest in UAP and have been uh, dedicating resources uh, to yeah. studying it. Most people only know about A Tip and OSAP and maybe Blue Book, but there's been other efforts as well. Mm. Okay, uh, were, those, so, were those? I know we're getting. Close yeah, about we only now, have but about I, 10 I, seconds. I, I, I want to ask you about uh, your relationship with uh, a man we've co known uh, to come to love, Harry Reid, uh, when we come back. Do that coming up here in just a minute. Uh, more with Lou Elizondo and uh, the author of the book, Imminent, coming up. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Great to have you with us. 888-900-3393. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, don't forget, we're digging into the murky world of PPP loans, and we show you exactly how some people scammed the system during Scandemic. Well, while you were trying to just keep the lights on, uh, it's a, a shocking world that we show you. Uh, but it's also exactly what we've come to expect when you mix big government and a crisis but there's a lot more. This documentary doesn't just tell the story. It brings it to life with the help of Alex Stein, who you know for his no-holds-barred, in-your-face style. Alex gets to the heart of the matter, confronting the fraudsters on the street and asking the questions we all want answers to. Uh, they might not be answers you exactly expect, though. So if you want to know more about where your tax dollars are being wasted, then you got to see our latest Blaze Original. Go to blazeoriginals.com slash pat and subscribe for a seven-day free trial plus 30 bucks off with the promo code SCAMDEMIC and watch it Tuesday, September 3rd. So just a couple of weeks from now. You'll be angry, you'll be informed, and most of all, though, you'll be ready to take a stand. Uh, we've got Lou Elizondo on with us today. He is the author of Imminent. Uh, he's the former head of ATIP, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Uh, he's also done a, documentaries, um, a ton of UFO type documentaries, UAP, UAP documentary, <laughs> and uh, and Lou, we couldn't help but notice that Harry Reid and uh, Kirsten Gillibrand were a pretty big part of at least one or two of them. Harry was for sure, and and so I, I know that Harry was pretty involved in the UFO world, right? He uh, he really wanted some answers on this. Did he work with you pretty closely? Yeah, I mean, he was he was certainly one of the program's champions and sponsors, but I think it's important to note that this was really a bipartisan effort. Um, you also had Senator Ted Stevens, a uh, Republican from Alaska, mm -hmm. uh, that sponsored this effort as well, along with Senator Inouye and even uh, the late uh, astronaut... Um, 
looks like uh, John Glenn uh, also had a piece of this. And so you had a lot of people really pushing for this. It wasn't just a, a, a liberal or a conservative thing. Uh, and even now when I go to the Hill, um, it's very, very much a, a, a bipartisan uh, yeah, we level all of support. Know. So, so you, don't, got, yeah, I mean, you don't find that Democrats or Republicans are, are more uh, apt to help out in this effort? Um, right bipartisan. now, it's probably more more Republicans, but there's oh, okay. also a hefty number of, of Democrats as well that are help championing this cause. I think ultimately everybody just wants a little bit more transparency and accountability. Yeah, uh, a lot of taxpayer money, uh, as we know, what was it like a t- trillion dollars or something like that was was lost by uh, mm-hmm. by the government. Um, nah. So I think you know they want they want greater greater insight and transparency. And I, frankly, I, I think that's a good idea. I think government should be, yeah. you know, for the people, by the people. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I, I resigned from my position, because, um, you know, I, I thought that the government needed to come clean on this topic. Yeah, I, I think we have a right to know. And we're treated like children well, yeah. who can't handle the truth. We talked about or that. Something. You know, that we, I get the whole, you know, we don't want our enemies to know thing. But Really, this is about, I mean, I, sounds kind of silly, but it's a global thing. We need to know. We need to know. Yep. If, these, if, if whatever is out there and, uh, you know, you, whether they're a being or not, I mean, they obviously have the technology. We can get into some of their technology that, uh, you know, you have documented in your book uh, that we can't compete with right now or maybe ever. Um why we need to know we need to know seriously we, Look, I, I, we can I, I take think it your gentlemen are absolutely correct here's here's the bottom line you can only classify something legally to protect two things sources and methods uh, it is illegal to make information classified simply because it's embarrassing uh, for the government to have a conversation or or to cover malfeasance and unfortunately uh, that's that's what's happened this conversation over several decades there were a minority group of individuals in the government who took it upon themselves to not inform Congress, to not inform uh, the chain of command within the executive branch and keep this information from the American people. Now, there are very valid reasons from a national security perspective where you want to you want to protect certain aspects of this. For example, if we gleaned any information from it, we're able to do anything with the technology. You don't want our adversaries knowing that. But the mere fact that we're not alone in the universe is not a classifiable fact, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing when Galileo first proposed that the Earth was not the center of the solar system. That's that's not a classifiable fact that any government or institution or organization should should keep from from its citizens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, tell us about some of the technology that we're dealing with here. Yeah, I mean the yeah. one the one uh, one of my favorites was um, uh, the bubble. Uh, the bubble technology, which, I mean, I guess that goes to making a, you know, 90 degree, uh, right turn, uh, that, uh, but the, the bubble technology was fascinating because we cannot penetrate that, but it's, they can do whatever they want inside this bubble. Correct. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, there's, there's been some, some theories posited in the past. One of them is, is what they call an Alcubierre drive or warp drive. In essence, um, it was Einstein that proposed, so everybody knows about Newtonian physics, right? Um, and, but it was really Einstein that understood that space and time is flexible and, and they're connected. Uh, mm-hmm. They can't be separated from each other. And uh, mass, it turns out that mass or a lot of energy can warp space time. And so uh, up until around 2015, the government had spent a lot of time and effort trying to figure out the separate exotic technologies that were responsible for the observables, the five observables, uh, as it relates to UAP. And it was in 2015, roughly, where the scientists got together and they had this kind of eureka moment, this, this, this epiphany that, um, that all of these observables may be a result of a single technology. And if you could, okay. if you could insulate a vehicle, a craft, uh, from the effects of space-time and have, in essence, your own space-time bubble, then all these things that we are seeing that seem like magic really are just advanced mm-hmm. physics. And it's possible to to recreate these these performance characteristics if you have if you understand that type of physics. Um, and that was that was kind of a breakthrough moment. Again, the scientists were the ones who who came up with that. Certainly, I wasn't smart enough to do that, but uh, they did. And uh, the further they went down that that hypothesis, the more it looked like that that there was something to it, and that that could absolutely explain a lot about how these UAP can can maneuver and and, and operate. Uh, is this something that we can? Or have uh, 
reverse engineered for our own benefit? So, unfortunately, I would not be able to comment on what capabilities U.S. government might or might just not you, have. Just you and me. Go ahead. Just- <laughs> yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I, ca- I can't comment on that. Uh, hmm. uh, and as I mentioned before, I still have, I still maintain my security clearance. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, it's not just the United States. There's other countries that are, are very much interested in this I topic. Oh, so it's not a, it's not yeah. a U.S. phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've also, uh, spoken to a a person who's really studied the, um, the, uh, the disappearance of the Malaysian 370, the flight 370. And, uh, part of his theory on what happened to that was that it was teleported by the U S government to a different location, that it was flying over the ocean. And then we, that would be this technology teleported it. And part of his speculation, I think is that maybe that came from alien technology because it seems to be beyond whatever we at least obviously have available to us now. And then when he shows the footage and obviously I, you know, I'm no, I don't, I don't expect you to say, yes, that's what happened, but they they would be creating a bubble like you're talking about that would, uh, that would do that. Yeah. But obviously you can't comment on that. Apparently. Well, I, I, you know, as it relates to the Malaysian airline, I frankly couldn't tell you. I, I really yeah. don't know. Um, I don't have any information to substantiate what happened to it, um, yeah. and I certainly wouldn't want to speculate simply because I, I don't know. Can you comment whether or not we've communicated um, with with these beings? Well, when you say communicate, you know, if you don't mind, I'm, I don't want to wordsmith here, but. There's a lot of ways to communicate. So, for mm-hmm. example, when a Russian surveillance aircraft is encountered over U.S. airspace or near U.S. airspace, we scramble two F-22s and we escort it out of our airspace. And that's – we are communicating an intent, right? Or if I yeah. go to you from across the hall and I go like this, I'm not verbally communicating with you, but I, mm-hmm. but I am communicating a message, right? Yeah, right, right. yeah. So, so there are there are ways that that communication, nonverbal communication, um, can occur. In this particular case, one could certainly make the argument that if these UAP are coming over our controlled U.S. airspace, over our sensitive military installations, they're interfering with our nuclear technology, or they're you know splitting a combat formation right down the middle. They're communicating. They're communicating sure. their capabilities. Right. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. We still don't know what the intent is. So yeah. in order to understand if something is a national security threat, there's there's two parts of the calculus, capabilities versus intent. Right. We see the capabilities. We don't have any idea yet the intent. So we, we simply don't know. Uh, but are they communicating with us? Some would argue most certainly so. Have we fired on these vehicles? So there's reports that, yep. Uh, yeah. And in some cases, uh, they were – so there was a big um, – there was a big flap over Washington, D.C., and a big front page story that came out uh, several decades ago where these luminous objects appeared over the Capitol and uh, potentially even over the White House. Mm. And uh, one of the uh, aircraft, jet aircraft that were scrambled from the local Air Force base, um, took shots at it. And then there's also uh, some reporting as well that the uh, in Tehran in the late 70s, uh, they they had a UFO incident, and uh, as a pilot tried to engage, um, it, it disabled his weapons. Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, we, saw, and- we saw what happened in the documentary Independence Day uh, <laughs> when they fired on the vehicle. Uh, we saw what happened. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't go well there. Um, no, South America, not. too. Uh, SU-22 engaged one uh, with its uh, with its cannons on, on board the aircraft. So there there is some some information to suggest that there have been some sort of military engagements in the past. Yeah, uh, concerning UAP, I would think they'd have pretty good defenses against that. Uh, yeah. If we have fired on them, um, you would think with the kind of technology that's that we're talking about here, they'd be able to defend themselves pretty well uh, against anything we have. I mean, one would one one would certainly you know presume that's the case. Uh, you know, if you have have a vehicle that's capable of of literally doing barrel rolls over anything we have at you know incredible speeds and and, and mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, one would certainly presume that again, I, I, some of these occurred well before my time uh, and frankly, my generation. Mm -hmm. So some of it's anecdotal. Um, so I can't, I wouldn't be able to tell you with a great degree of confidence, you know, if that was true, it was reported that happened, but you know, again, I, I wasn't there. Yeah. You, you mentioned the length of time that this stuff has been going on. It's, I mean, it goes back 70, 80, 90 years or or longer, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, I was actually speaking to a, uh, a very senior person, uh, chief academic at the Vatican. And, uh, you know, they have uh, this, these incidents going back hundreds of years, yeah. uh, and if not a, wow. over a thousand years. Yeah, uh, because wow. the uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but the Vatican Church uh, has probably one of the greatest <laughs> intelligence collection capabilities, oldest collection capabilities out mm-hmm. there. Um, people would, uh, in the past, always uh, go to their, their, their priests and report right. things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes miracles, right? And so these 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 incidents would get reported up through the Vatican eventually and into the archive. Uh, there's reports of uh, a discussion between a Roman, Roman soldier and a Roman general, where he describes what they call the eclipse. Eclipse. Uh, think of eclipse. It's a Latin word. Uh, it's like sun, right? It looks like a sun. They, they discussed it was the shape of the Roman shields. Uh, the, so they called them eclipses. And there were these reports of these flaming Roman shields in the sky that were following them from from battle space to battle space. Um, you also have the uh, Nuremberg incident in Germany in the in the Middle Ages. Uh, very interesting, uh, where a whole town saw what appeared to be a dogfight uh, between UAP. So there's wow. there's um, a lot of lot of documentation <laughs> on this that goes back centuries, in fact. Yeah, uh, one of the most fascinating that I've seen in multiple uh, documentaries is the incident over Phoenix, Arizona, in I think 1998, 97. Have you looked into that at all? And the fact so that- you're, you're referring to the Phoenix Lights. Um, yeah. I will tell you from our focus, we were mostly interested in military encounters. Okay. Uh, so we didn't really collect a lot of civilian data, and there's some reasons for that. Our focus was on military encounters, uh, where we had the the radar data, we had the gun camera footage, we had the trained <laughs> observers and the pilots reporting the information. Um, I am aware of the Phoenix Lights incident. Um, inc- I mean, you might even say incidents because it occurred yeah. over a period of time. Mm-hmm. A lot of people witnessed it. Um, I'm not at all surprised Thousands. by it. Yeah, but yeah, a lot. A lot. Mm-hmm. Um, even the governor at yeah. the time. But uh, no, I, I I do not know the ins and outs of that particular investigation simply because it wasn't a military investigation. There were there was some discussion that maybe there were some military assets, uh, some A tens in the sky, or some helicopters uh, dropping flares, uh, white phosphorus illumination flares. Uh-huh. Uh, but I think that was I think that was proven not to be, yeah. be correct. Are you more familiar familiar with the uh, incident at Malmstrom Air Force Base? Uh, it's a military air base in Great Falls, Montana. And apparently there was an incident there where there were UFOs that were quite interested in our nuclear capability and and actually messed with our uh, with our nukes. That's correct. It disabled them. It yeah. is, in fact, it disabled an entire flight, an entire string worth of, of nuclear Nuclear weapons, ICBMs uh, that we have, but if if that's not alarming uh, enough, it, it appears that in Russia, uh, UAPs may have turned them on. Um, yeah, you mentioned that and wow. started a sequence. Yeah, so you know it's 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 a concern, wow. and it wasn't just over Maelstrom. We have we've had these things over Savannah River facility. We've had them over uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Uh, and by the way, there's documents out there that that show it. You can get there's a website out there. Uh, called the Black Vault that has a lot of uh, release official releases of these incidents from the U.S. government, and they're there for anybody to peruse. The U.S. government actually released these reports, and there are thousands. Um, it's it's pretty amazing. I think when people realize just how long we've been interested in this topic yeah. as a country, uh, ever since the Foo Fighters and and World War II. So um, are they, this, is, I, this is nothing new. With the release of all that, I mean, they're trying to overwhelm us. I mean, our, we were ready for the truth, but then you know we get overwhelmed with you know this, this even just one site that uh, you know has documentation of, that goes back a thousand years, and so you know we're like, okay, well, I know that. Uh, I'm talking about today. What are we doing mm-hmm. today? I mean, are we right. ready for that? I mean, you see the shape of the world that we live in now. Um, are we, are we ready for that? I mean, I look, am, I, but I believe America can handle the truth. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, I always too. tell people, look, it is, is truth and transparency worth it? And I, and I would tell you in every case, yeah, it is. Look, if, yeah. if I go to the doctor, do I want my doctor, you know, <laughs> holding back and telling me I don't have cancer when I have it, especially mm-hmm. if I got a chance to beat it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not great news, but I still want to know, uh, especially mm-hmm. if it involves me. Right. Or, yeah. you. so I think, um, I think. Yeah, I think we whether we can handle or not is not really up to me. Um, you know, the law is a law, and I think you know it either means something or it doesn't. Um, yeah, and I think you know I think Americans deserve to know the truth. 
It's been that's interesting my, my... lately. They keep acting as if they're going to spill it all now. Okay, now we're, we realize that you want to know and, right. and we want to share and we want to be more transparent. And then they release these documents and it's all redacted and there's nothing new in it. And that happens over and over <laughs> yes, and over it again. Does. Can we expect more of that? Or do you think there will, there will come a time anytime soon where we do find out uh, the information that they have available? Sure. Well, I first of all, I think disclosure is is a process. It's not an event. Okay. But mm-hmm. when you already have a former director of national intelligence and a former director of the CIA all coming out and saying there's something to this, and then you have landmark legislation that was passed by Congress the last couple of years and new legislation that's being proposed for this year, and you have the establishment of an official UFO or a UAP investigatory body uh, under the executive branch. Uh, that's we've come a long way, guys, in in the yeah, last six yeah. years. Don't look now, but I mean, yeah, it's not you know maybe the disclosure that everybody's expecting or hoping for, but it's it, we've we've gone further in the last six years than in the last sixty. A lot years of that has to topic. do with you, my friend. <laughs> so, no, listen, I appreciate it, guys, but I can't take all the credit for it. Look, this is this has been something that has as I think. A lot of it's timing. Um, I think the pervasiveness of these technologies here, like cell phones, more and more people are becoming wise to the fact that there are things in our skies that yeah. are not our aircraft. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of people that want to want the truth. There's a lot of whistleblowers now that are that are willing to come forward and have conversations with Congress. So um, I appreciate it, but it's it, it's I, I cannot take credit for for this to where we are today. Uh, it's mm-hmm. been a huge grassroots effort right now. Uh, people that just are tired of being lied to by the government. They're just they're just sick of it. Yeah. And yes, the government still does it. You know, anybody who says, well, the, the government doesn't lie. Well, OK, you're right. <laughs> yeah, the Pe- Pentagon never lies, right? Unless we're talking about Iran-Contra. Or we're talking about the Afghanistan yeah. withdrawal. Or the uh, Pentagon papers. Don't bog me down with facts. Don't yeah. worry about that. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my, my focus here is trying to make government work the way it should work. I'm, I'm not, I look, I, I love my country. I love mm-hmm. my government I, and I, mm-hmm. I, I love my fellow citizens. I just want the government to work the way it's supposed to, yes. you know, and if yes. at least let the members of Congress who have oversight on this stuff, brief them, let them know the truth. And then at right. that point, at least have a conversation with the American people. You don't have to tell them everything. Just say, look, guys, here's what we do now. And by the mm-hmm. way, there's some other stuff we're not going to tell you about because it involves maybe uh, some sensitive technologies that we want to kind of keep close hold. But the bottom line is that this thing is real, whatever it is. And we're right. going to you know, collectively get to the bottom. Front. I, I'll tell you guys, frankly, I don't want the government in part of this conversation. If it's national security, great. But this is a conversation that affects every one of us yeah. equally and yet differently. Mm-hmm. And there's philosophical pieces to this, sociolog- sociological mm-hmm. pieces to this. There's there's spiritual aspects to this and theological aspects to this yeah, and right. psychological aspects. And I don't want the government telling me how I should feel about this. I, yeah, this right. is a conversation that I'd rather have with a priest or a rabbi or maybe uh, you know some friends around the dinner table. Um, <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, one hundred percent. Thank you so much for the, for the work you've done on this, it's, and it's it's fascinating. Sure is. And uh, tell people where they can see more if they'd like to uh, get in touch with your work. Oh, uh, you know what? I, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to plug myself. Um, I've got. The, uh, there, I have sites on social media. By the way, um, okay. Luis Elizondo. Yeah, elizondoofficial.com. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, don't just don't. Don't worry about following me. Follow follow the topic because mm-hmm. there's a lot happening. There's a lot going to be happening here in the next year, I think, that should help drive this conversation forward. All right. Now, your it. book's going to do that. Uh, Eminent uh, is going to do that for people for sure. Definitely. Uh, thanks, Lou. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Gentlemen, my honor and privilege. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. Thank you. Uh, fascinating. I mean, that's it's really an interesting topic. Yes, Whether it you is. believe they're here or not, or you believe that there are UFOs or UAPs or not, it's, it's fun to uh to look into until you realize that they have technology that uh, that can blow far us off superior the face of to the us yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but again i still think even though he kind of hedged that that i i still think if you know with the kind of technology that they possess if they really are uh here and they haven't uh, that, taken they're, that they're not ad- adversaries right yeah right i don't know what they're doing i don't know why they're doing it but uh, so far, they haven't destroyed us. So yeah, <laughs> that's a plus that we know of. <laughs> Look, we're all feeling the pinch from inflation, right? I know I am. Uh, the cost of living is just kind of out of control right now. Um, you go to the store and you find out milk has doubled in price in the last year. It's insanity. Butter, eggs, whatever, meat. 
I mean, oh. Kamala Harris oh my admitted gosh. herself, meat is up 50%. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> That's <laughs> you. <laughs> And it's not just groceries, it's health care costs that have skyrocketed, too. Americans are hurting right now, and health care is a big part of why they're hurting. But here's the thing. We all know government's not the answer to fixing this mess. So what is? Try Lassie Health. It's here to shake things up in a big way. That's L-A-A-S-Y, Lassie Health. It's not health insurance. It's better than that. Uh, Lassie Health offers access to the health care you want without all the red tape and the restrictions and the inflated costs that make traditional health insurance so frustrating and expensive. For 30 bucks a month, here's what you get. 400 prescription medications free, free unlimited virtual mental health counseling, and free 24-7 vir- virtual urgent care. Uh, if you need lab tests, those are up to 60% off. Imaging, up to 75% off. And even procedures and surgeries, over 50% off. Real savings. And don't worry if you have conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol. Those are not considered pre-existing conditions as long as you haven't been hospitalized for them in the last year before you enroll. So if you're ready to take control of your health, do it at HealthyLink.com. HealthyLink.com. For a limited time, you can get your first month free, up to $100 off eligible plans. Go to HealthyLink.com. All right, we will. Uh, I will see you um, a week from Tuesday, actually, going on vacation, wow. heading up to Utah. Uh, and a little in hunt, the meantime, a little fishing. Yeah, right, exactly. Hunting, fishing, hiking. You know what kind of outdoorsy guy I am. This is Pat Gray, Unleashed.